Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. It's good to be amongst you again on live streaming. Amen. What uh, many folks have called the new norm. Amen. I pray that you have had a blessed day. You have had a blessed week. Amen. And that you still trust in God in spite of, of it all. Amen. God is good to us. And he is still God. He still uh, deserves the praise, the honor, and all the glory. Amen. Truly, I'm just grateful to God uh, for what he's doing in and amongst our lives. Amen. Because I realize if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't be here today. And it's only because of his grace and his mercy that we're still standing Amen. And truly for that, we owe God the highest praise. Amen. As we're just waiting for a few folks to sign in. Amen. Just want to say thank you to everyone who uh, donated or sent some love, text, called us for Father's Day. I pray that all the men, uh, the fathers really uh, were shown some type of love. Amen. On that special day, Sunday is Father's Day. Amen. Truly, we just thank God. It is just good to be loved. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you know that you're loved, man, that just changes your whole outcome. Amen. Your mindset, knowing that somebody somewhere loves you. Amen. And truly, I thank God for all the gifts and love that came in. Uh, toward your pastor, your brother, your friend, whoever I am to you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We thank God for you. We thank God we for all those of you out there in live streaming land. Amen. Amen. We thank God for your prayers and your support. It means everything to us. Amen. Because we know that God has strategically put people all over the world that will be praying and supporting us. Amen. Every step of the way. And that's what it's all about. Being together, being united, being one voice for Jesus Christ. Amen. Overcomers in Christ. And we love y'all and we're praying for you. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get ready to do our Psalm 91, the canopy of God's protection over our lives. Amen. Amen. I hope you have your Bibles and you're ready to uh, go over that with us. And it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is the refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash a foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God is a good God. All the time. Amen. And all the time. God is good. Amen. That's old school right there. God is good. 
all the time. Amen. We just need everybody to understand how good he is. You know, he can stop our breath just by the flick of his hand and cut us off out of here. But because of his grace and his mercy, amen, he lets us go and see another day. Amen. amen. And he has given this hour unto us to open the word of God. And I mean, to get in the word. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that you bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you because we realize we don't deserve any of your goodness, God. No goodness of our own, but because of your unconditional, unfailing love. God, you saw fit to wake us up, give us the activities of our limbs and soundness of mind. Father, we owe you the highest praise. God, we come together as a body of believers. Oh, God, we hunger. We thirst after your righteousness, God. And your word tells us that we shall be filled. And Father, I thank you for overflow uh, in our lives, God, not only just in the church realm, but outside, oh God, in our finances, in our heart, in our mind, in our families, oh God. God, that you're being faithful in everything we touch, oh God. I thank you for favor tonight. I pray for that young man, that woman, God, that is listening, that needs favor tonight, God, in whatever area they have, they are petitioning you for right now, God. I pray, God, that your hand is on that situation in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that you hear our cry as your children. And Father, we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Oh, my God. We had a, a, a fabulous time Sunday, a blessed time. Amen. The Holy Spirit showed up and showed out. Amen. Talking about the character of a good father. Amen. And we're just going to continue uh, on with that. We had so many points. <laughs> we never got to the points. We got on stuck on one and a half, I believe. Did we? We, we did. Amen. <laughs> uh -huh. And I pray tonight that we uh, uh, share some more truth ab about what the care of, you know, having the character of a good father. If you have your Bibles, uh, would you turn with me to St. John, the 14th chapter? Our base scripture is coming out of St. John, the 14th chapter. Amen. We're going to read in your hearing. Mm -hmm. Amen. We honor Pastor Pat tonight. We thank God for her. Mm -hmm. We thank you for your prayers always for Pastor Pat. Amen. Oh, God, this, your prayers is needed. We thank God for you praying for Pastor Pat. Amen. All right. Are you in St. John, the 14th chapter? Mm -hmm. Verses 20 and 21. Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> Can someone read? It says in the NIV, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them. Amen. Amen. Is it 21? Huh? 20 and 21. Oh, I missed 20. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Amen. Truly, we thank God for his word. While we are yet talking about that, can someone get St. John, the 15th chapter, and we'll read verses 9 and 10. It says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. Amen. So God is telling us, just as he has a relationship with his Father, uh, Jesus Christ has a relationship with his Father, and they love, and it's based on love and commitment and obeying the commandments, we ought to also have that same commitment as fathers to our heavenly father. Mm -hmm. Amen. Talking about the character of a good father. Amen. And that comes with, once we establish, our first point was a good father knows the heavenly father. 
Amen. And we really brought that out because when our Heavenly Father, when our relationship is right with God, it's easier to love somebody else. It's easier to love our wife. It's easier to love our children when our, our relationship with Jesus Christ is right. Amen. Amen. And as the scripture just showed how Jesus loves uh, 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 his father and they become one. And he says, once we come into the fellowship of giving our life to Christ, they are both love us. We'll have double love. Amen. 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 Loving us. Amen. And so it is through the working and the power of the Holy Spirit that shows us how to love like Christ. Right. It's not man's kind of love. It's not, it's not based on I love you only if you love me. It's not none of that. It is when the Holy Ghost, that, that's one of the fruit of the Spirit. He begins to work in our heart and he shows us, he demonstrates, he puts it in our heart how to love like Christ love. How many men would be better off if they had that kind of love in their home? How many fathers would be better for it if they loved their wives like Christ loved the church? Uh, I don't want to get stuck on that, but we, we brought that out. Amen. A good father knows the heavenly father. Amen. And uh, it's more to it than just... Uh, have, having babies and all, it's more to it. Amen. God has given sound instruction of what a father should be like, what he should be doing, what is his responsibility in the home. And his number one responsibility is loving God with all of his heart, his mind, his soul, and all of his strength. Amen. 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 And uh, we, uh, once, once the, we in the family, we can't be selfish anymore. Amen. We got to think about our wives. We got to put our wives' needs and our children's needs above our own. Amen. How many selfish fathers are there when it, they still have that mindset? It's just me, myself, and I. They get caught up in their own world and neglect the responsibilities of their family. Mm -hmm. And God is saying that there's a better way. Amen. <laughs> yes, there is a better way. On that same note, we said fathers are to present God to their children. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is uh, the, 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 uh, the way God has it designed and set up. Amen. It is through the father's spiritual relationship with Christ that he says, family, this is how we're going to live in this house. Yeah, he can't govern the house down the street, but right where he lives, we're going to put God as the head of our life. Mm -hmm. Amen. And when you put God first, everything else, well, you know the scripture in Matthew 6 and 33. What does it say? Seek ye first. Seek ye first. The kingdom. The kingdom of God. Amen. And so when God is put first, amen, every other thing has to line up with it. Amen. Amen. And God will always honor his word. Yes. Real quick, can you get those five points again? The five points that we shared with you Sunday. All right. A good father, point number one, a good father knows the heavenly father. Mm -hmm. Amen. We see you. Thank you for logging in. God bless you. Uh, point number two, a good father loves the mother of his children. Amen. Point number three, a good father loves his children. Yes, he loves the mother of his children and he loves his children. Yes, yes. He got to love the mom first. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> a good point number three, a good father loves his children. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. Point number four, a good father will teach, train, and discipline his children. We probably could spend all night on yes, that one right there. And point number five, a good father encourages, he comforts, and he warns his children. Mm -hmm. Amen. So those are the five points uh, that we wanted to share Sunday, but we never really got all the way through them. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that's why we're having a continuation tonight. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. We just want, I know women out there, all the women that are logged in, don't you want a good father? Don't you, aren't you just blessed to have a good father? Amen. And if he's good, he can be better. Okay, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. We still growing. We're a work in progress. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And if our natural fathers are gone, we thank God for spiritual fathers. Amen. Hallelujah. God has this thing all set up. So uh, we also learned that a father, he's he's a protector, he's a covering, and he's a role model for his children. Amen. We said Sunday that he should be the first hero to his children. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not the gym coach, football coach, and aunt and uncle. No, it should be the dad. The dad should be the main influences, uh, influencer <laughs> in the child's life. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. I thank God for having a godly father in our home. Amen. I don't Amen. know any other way. Uh, we were raised in holiness, Pentecostal holiness, amen, and dad was always there. A good father is meant to represent the fatherhood of God to his children, amen. We ought to be imitators of God, and we found that in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 1 where it says, be uh, uh, imitators, therefore be imitators of God. We're supposed to reflect God's image in our life. What we see God do, we ought to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. When, God's, when, when God is showing us things, he's revealing things to us, we got to convey that to our families. Amen. And our children should see us as spiritual role models. Amen. We know the culture today where they trying to take the men out the house, out of the rightful places and different dynamics are set up in the home. But the way God set it up, he gave instruction. He gave authority. He gave dominion to the father, to the husband. Amen. And as Pastor Pat brought out Sunday, God's design was saying the husband, the wife, and then the children. Mm -hmm. Amen. But things been happening, you know, happening in our society. Things get out of order. Amen. And Amen. and we got many houses where the father is absent. Amen. And so there are ways that we can still be a blessing to our children. Amen. 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 God still loves us. And so the Bible says, all right, so let's go to our point number two, because we really work. <laughs> we work number one really well Sunday. <laughs> A good father loves the mother of his children. Mm -hmm. Amen. My God. So as I just said, let's turn to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 25. We got to do it God's way. Uh, a good father loves the mother of his children. Amen. So many men, you know, after they drop the seed, the baby come, they want to take off and run. Mm -hmm. But the way God set it up, He's, he wants husband, wife, children in the house. Amen. He's not, it wasn't set up where the woman take care of the household and the children and the man's out dropping seeds around the world. That's the world's way of, of doing things. But the way God has designed it, if she was good enough to sleep with, she ought to be good enough to live with. I might get in trouble, but I had to say it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. And so, and if she is not the one, there shouldn't be no coming together anyway, if you're not married. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's put that in there. <laughs> Amen. But the Bible says we all fall short. Amen. Of the glory. We understand that. Wow. All right. What's uh, Ephesians 5 and 25 say? It says. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Amen. Read verse 28. To make her holy, cleansing her by washing by the washing with water through the word. Mm -hmm. You said 28. Oh, 28. 28. Uh -huh. And to present her to himself <laughs> as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but Amen. holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own, own bodies. bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. My God, it's, it's already written. 
It's already written. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. And if you love, uh, once you, so men ought to love their wives as their own body. Oh my God. That means he ain't going to try to inflict pain. Uh, uh, and all the other foolishness that the devil be trying to use the men in the house, but he is going to respect, amen, respect her for the vessel who she is, amen. And just as Christ loved the church, we ought to love our wives, love, amen. And I was looking, and you've heard this before in the church where uh, it doesn't tell the woman to love, it tells the husband to love because I believe when a lady is in, when she's feeling and experiencing the God kind of love in her relationship, in her marriage, amen, she is going to automatically, I mean, it's an instinct, it's in her, she's going to pour out her heart to the one she loves. Amen. Once you're in a, uh, uh, your wife's heart and you're loving her, you're, you're providing for her need uh, mentally, spiritually, financially, physically, whatever, she is going to reciprocate that love back to her husband. That's right. Hallelujah. Men, we don't necessarily, necessarily say, honey, do you love me? Honey, do you love me? We don't do that every day. What, what the man looks for in the marriage, he looks for respect. That's right. Mm -hmm. He looks for respect. If he knows his wife respects him, amen, he can hold his chest out. She got right. my back. Right. Amen. When because once you respect the man, he knows he's worth his his decisions mean something. But mm -hmm. if he gets, if you keep uh sucking his decisions uh, and things off as unimportant, don't want to hear it, you shut his voice down, then you take away from his manhood. Oh, that's right. Amen. And Miss Sally on the job is waiting on him. <laughs> oh my God. Amen. Wives, be careful how you uh you shut your husbands down and don't give him a voice in the house. Because when you continually shut him down, Miss Sally on the job is saying, Come on, I got you. I'll listen. You talk so smooth. Y'all know all and then you you'll be in trouble. Amen. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor John, that speaks to a point that we, we raised on Sunday when I said that we can change the light bulb, mm -hmm. but sometimes mm -hmm. we don't. We just wait for you to do it, to let Amen. you know that we need you to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's really important for those wives who have husbands who work overseas mm -hmm. because sometimes they go over there to work and they stay a very long time where it actually turns out that they live overseas mm -hmm. and they visit home. home. Mm -hmm. So because he's out of his rightful place, uh, as I think as Bishop Holcomb placed, uh, uh, said it, he says when the husband is misplaced, that causes the wife to become, mm, mm, no, I can't remember how he said mm -hmm. that. But anyway, but when the husband is out of his place, the wife becomes misplaced and the children become displaced. Mm. Yes. Amen. Yeah. So Amen. when when you're out of your place by being gone for so long, yes, it is. You, you're working overseas. You're providing finances for the family. Amen. But all they have is your money. Uh, they don't have your presence. Come on. If you have sons, your son does not have his father to look up to. Uh, the little girl does not have her daddy, her Prince Charming. To look up to. Amen. The mother must be in charge of everything. Yeah. And you said Sunday, our shoulders weren't built for that. Yes, we weren't right. built to be mom and dad. Amen. So, and, and I don't even know why I'm harping on this, but those who are, are seeking jobs overseas, you men, be careful about that. Even Amen. females, make sure Praise that God. God is sending you. Mm -hmm. And only for a period. Mm -hmm. Making that money will start to look better and better, or it, in, in even poorer terms, it'll look gooder and gooder to you. It'll look so good to you that when it's time for you to come home, you won't want to come home. Mm -hmm. And what will end up happening is you will destroy your family. You'll pluck it down with your own hands. Mm -hmm. 
over a piece of paper. Paper and money. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Pat. That is great. Amen. We got to do it God's way. Amen. Amen. So a good father loves the mother of his children. Amen. And we need the Holy Spirit help to show us how to love our wives right. Many times men don't realize, and I believe I said this Sunday, uh, the fathers don't understand how we treat our wives, that it affects the children. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And can I say something that too, when you say, uh, you know, the, that the, the good father loves the mother of his children, sometimes there are quite a few baby mamas, mm. you know, because we've gotten things out of God's order. Yes. So if, if the man is now married to someone else, he, he, he's not going to love that baby mama the way he loves his wife. But what he must do is have respect for that baby mama. He must never call that baby mama out of her name. I don't care how angry she makes him. He ought to never belittle her, never put her down, never talk about what a horrible person she is. Because you have to think about this too. If she was so horrible, why'd you get with her? So if she's that bad, that says something about you. You're not that great. It, it does, you know. If, 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 amen. So, so for for the baby mamas, Pastor John is not saying that that fathers you have to love them. You must respect them and love them from the standpoint of a sister. Only of a sister, no longer from the standpoint of a lover, of the standpoint of a wife. She is simply your baby's mother, and you must respect her and treat her as such. Never let your child see you mistreat your baby's mother. Amen. Man, that was that was it. Amen. Because once the children see that in their home, most times they'll take the side of the mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Regardless of what she said or what she mm -hmm. has done, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that and that will affect their their relationships uh, in the future if it's not dealt with properly. Amen. 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 So no matter what, we got to love the mother of our children. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Let's go ahead on to point number three. All we right. don't want to get stuck. Right. We gonna we gonna try. <laughs> Amen. All right. Point number three says, a good father loves his children. Uh -huh. Notice what I said, loves his children. <laughs> it's an ongoing thing Amen. from birth all the way up to time they, they expire. Amen. Or, yeah. you or, or the father <laughs> expire. You got to love your children, Amen. love their children. Oh, my God. What can I say about that? Many men believe buying a gift for their child mm -hmm. is no. takes mm -hmm. the place of exemplifying love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They say, I buy you clothes, I buy you the, the Jordans, and mm -hmm. I buy mm -hmm. you all that. And the child is says, I want it, and the, the father says, Okay, I will do that because mm -hmm. and to make you happy, but let me live my life on the outside. Right. And that's not love. Mm -hmm. Because you're mm -hmm. building a false security there. Mm -hmm. The child is thinking, all I have to do is say, I need something, and it's going to be provided by mm -hmm. my man, my husband, my, my mm -hmm. husband, or right. my, my, you know, my, mm -hmm. my wife. And that's not the real kind of love God was showing. Mm -hmm. You can't replace love with things. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. yes. Fathers. Things, clothes, buying expensive things does not take the place of you loving your child. Amen. Amen. It Amen. is your moral duty. It is your Amen. natural duty Amen. to love your children. Amen. And they should find that kind of love in the home. Amen. Amen. There ought to be nurturing and uh, um, admonition. There ought to be a culture in your home where they walk in and they want to run and hug you. Amen. Yes, yes. Uh, like Bishop said, if you come home and your kids don't get happy to see you, hey, dad, hey, father, and, and they were like, mm, just dad, you probably got a problem. You probably need to work on some communications because men sometimes have problems showing affection. 
Mm-hmm. Because they didn't get it in their house. Remember, I said unresolved issues will most, uh, uh, most likely. likely transfer into oh, yeah. your mm-hmm. marriage if you don't uh, try to fix it. And so, mm-hmm. if he has not uh, been the huggy type, their family like, no, we just we mm-hmm. we knew we loved, but we didn't tell nobody. Right. <laughs> what Maybe kind of love is that? Love language. <laughs> yeah. Bishop, our, our late bishop said, "Love isn't love unless it is given yeah, no away." Right. Amen. Give your love away to your children, fathers. Amen. 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 Uh-huh. Let them know that uh, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, and trying to find your identity, your father's love will never change. Amen. And it's just like Jesus Christ. I love with Christ will never change. It's unconditional and it's unfailing. Amen. No matter what we do, no matter how we turn our back on him, his love never changes. Amen. So what, what builds the confidence in a child's life, no matter how messed up or bad decisions they make, long as they know my father still loves me. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes, right. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Too many parents, too many fathers yeah. says, because you didn't do what I say do and mm-hmm. because you did it your way, mm-hmm. get out my house and I, I'm no, I don't even want you to even talk to me. Uh, mm-hmm. We disown you as mm-hmm. a child. Mm-hmm. That is the worst thing you can could do yeah. because what you're actually saying i'm turning you over to the wolves yes i'm yes. taking my yes. cover yes. from over you. i'm not protecting you no mm. more and i would run for the wolves to get you mm. and then you uh, still feel my love mm-hmm. amen when a child knows he's loved dad i you, you know the story of the uh, prodigal son he messed mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but that day that day that he had a reckoning day when he had to come to himself mm-hmm. he had to realize I made a bad decision. Yeah. That's right. But what if he came down that long dusty road and says, I, I got to go back home because when I left, there was love there. But what mm-hmm. if he came down that dusty road and his father had changed his love position wow. mm-hmm. and said, now you dirty, you filthy, you don't represent me. You can't even carry the family's name. No, mm-hmm. that's not the kind of love the father has for us. Oh, he Jesus. says, why are you dirty? Why you were yet sinners? I died for you. Mm-hmm. I gave you my life. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And when you come back to Christ Jesus, amen, you can still experience the same kind of love. Amen. The same kind of love the father has to have for his children. Mm-hmm. We got some, we know we got children out there. They got mm-hmm. to learn life, uh, some hard knocks, mm-hmm. some bumps, some pitfalls in the road, mm-hmm. but we still got to love them. That's right. That's when, right. when they call, when they finally make that call, dad, can mm-hmm. I come home? Oh, dad, can I talk to you? Well, that's the time to minister grace. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Not to say, oh, yeah, you remember when. No, because Christ, he says, once we ask for forgiveness, he remembers our sins no no more. more. Come on, somebody. Somebody ought to get happy tonight. Amen. Christ, he loves us, and we ought to love our children. Amen. A father's love affects everything he does for his children. Amen. You know, one of the times I do remember... uh, Way back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Amen. My grandbaby said the early 1900s. (laughs) Amen. When me and my sisters were outside playing dodgeball. You know, we had fun games out there. We weren't in the house. Not like you were today. And and pushing buttons. You had to go outside and find happiness. (laughs) Amen. So dodgeball became a part of our life, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, on our free time. And when mom and dad said, all right, we coming out. Oh, we got happy because they took time to, 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 to be with us, to, to run. And, and you know, you want to hit your dad a little harder with the ball. <laughs> See if he could take it. All right, no. <laughs> See if you could take it. Yeah. And then, of course, he don't, we don't want him to knock us out either. Amen. 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 But it was so, I remember, we just kept having mama jump roping with us. Come on. Dad is trying to jump rope, ride bikes with us. It, it does something to the mind, the heart, uh, of knowing that our, our 
family is as one. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I know y'all got stories too where your dad was right there when you wanted, when you needed him. Amen. Hallelujah. And I and tonight I just pray, you know, as we talk about the character of a good father, fathers have a uh, you know, we haven't all made good decisions. Yes. Right. Amen. And and God always give us, a, <laughs> Lord Jesus, help my family. He gives us opportunities to repent and get back in line. He does. Amen. Yeah. Just like Christ does with us. When we get out of line, he's right there to forgive us. Amen. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Pastor John, is it okay to let the girls share a story of, of them with you? Because you were a very good father. Amen. Do y'all know? Do y'all know a story right now, right off the top of your head? I do. I have a quick one. Okay. Okay. So, one day, um, <laughs> up so the people in got, the back can hear you. We got two minutes. Okay. One day when I was younger, I remember seeing my dad walking, and um, Come on, quick enough. huh? Go Go ahead. Ahead. Go and um, he was carrying these grocery bags. I think we may have had one car at the time. I don't know why he was walking. I just remember. We saw him walking, so we pulled over and picked him up, and uh, when we got back to the house, we were unpacking the groceries, and in the grocery bag was my favorite applesauce, Mott's applesauce, <laughs> not the cheap stuff, the good stuff. And so, like I said, I don't know why he was walking or, you know, the conditions. All I know is that my dad knows my affection for that good applesauce, <laughs> and obviously times were tough, and yeah. he could have chosen the cheap, no name, whatever, but my daddy's love for me persuaded him to get me wow. good moms. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and something as simple as Amen. applesauce Amen. made her happy. Amen. Some 30 years later, she still remembered. <laughs> Amen. Siobhan, do you have one? Yeah. Uh, oh, I just remember playing outside together. We rode bikes together. I yes. think that is so Daddy crazy. Yeah. And playing all the time. Yeah. yeah. He used to leave me running. <laughs> I remember that. Amen. <laughs> so when when we say a father, thank y'all for sharing. Amen. Mm-hmm. So when we say a father uh, loves his children, when he, when you talk about love in the home. Love is the basic foundation for the, the training and the teaching and the discipline, yes. which is our next, our next point, point number four. A good father will teach, train, and discipline his children. Can you get Proverbs 1 and 8? Uh-huh. Deuteronomy yes. uh, 11 and 19. Amen. Amen. A good father will teach, train, and discipline his children. And so as we follow the instructions that we get from the word of God, Mm -hmm. we are to do the same thing with our children. As Mm -hmm. Christ teaches us, we in turn teach our family. What does Proverbs 1 and 8 say? It says, my son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Amen. And so kids are needing in the home, our children need instructions. Amen. Mm-hmm. Notice I didn't say they need threats and yelling. Right. They need to be taught sound doctrine. They need to t- be taught what does God uh, say about this? How does God uh, say about that? And we are responsible. God holds the father responsible to mm-hmm. teach our children about life. That's right. And mm-hmm. our mindset, our, our position that we take, as we say all the time, has to be the same stance that the Word of God mm-hmm. takes. Mm-hmm. Amen. That way, when, uh, when kids are asked, well, how do you do this? And how do you, what do you believe? And, mm-hmm. and all, my daddy said, Right. Come on. Hey, yes, yes. They ought to have enough confidence in you that you will lead them the right way, and that is through the word of God. Mm-hmm. Amen. So that's why it's so important for the father to have a relationship with God. Yes. Amen. This is where fathers, we learn the values of life, the standards of righteous living, mm-hmm. and uh, the obligation to love one another. In other words, once we know God's standard, this is our more basics, our, the, mor- the morals where we get the values that we believe in life. Mm-hmm. Because kids that come up with no values, with, with no morals, you see them, them are the ones that's walking down the street showing their underwear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Right? Yes, yes, because th th because listen, there were some things I did not choose to get involved in because I knew my daddy wouldn't approve of it. Mm -hmm. Approve of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The second thing, I, there are some things that I chose not to get involved because I did not want to bring reproach upon my family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I took the mindset, whatever I do and it gets around, because I we had a church, we were in church, mm -hmm. and it get, the pastor's son, the elder's son, mm -hmm. the one that was a, a preacher's kid, mm -hmm. the one that was taught in Sunday school, the word of God, why did he go out there and do something crazy like that? Mm -hmm. To bring reproach upon the family, amen? amen? And so, but I had to learn those values in my home. Mm -hmm. I had to learn those values in Sunday school, mm -hmm. amen? That's why we say, thou should not, thou should not. That is, Bill, you got standards, you got boundaries. It is the father's job in the home to teach your children boundaries. Yeah. Oh, uh, if you and not only that, you teach them if you do this, this is going to be the consequences. Mm -hmm. If Perfect. they set a nine o'clock curfew and you come in nine fifteen mm -hmm. and you're talking about, oh, I just was 15 minutes late. No, mm -hmm. you need to suffer the full consequence that your father set mm -hmm. if you miss that curfew. Mm -hmm. right. nine, nine oh one, not nine fifteen. <laughs> pass it, pass it. Nine oh nine oh one is too late. <laughs> Amen. Kids mm -hmm. need these values. They need these standards. They need Boundaries. these guidelines in their lives. Amen. Mm -hmm. So as they come up, as they grow, as they start to make decisions, because one of the things that bring joy to a parent is seeing that their child is responsible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only that they're responsible, that they can make wise decisions in the absence of the, the parents. Parent. Right. Mm -hmm. It is a sad commentary. You and you and Kalamazoo, your child is in New Mexico on the other side of the world, and, and all they keep calling is and telling you about every bad decision they made. You're saying, didn't I teach you anything? Mm -hmm. Did anything get inside where you can stand up and get and get uh guard your heart, guard your mm -hmm. mind, and say, remember what you've been taught? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When they get married, do mm -hmm. you remember anything that you saw your mom and dad doing in the house? Mm -hmm. Implement it if it's good. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Imitate it. Be imitators of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. amen. Hallelujah. And not only that, amen, when we talk about discipline, mm -hmm. many parents really are hard on discipline. But they they'll beat a child. They they know that scripture about the rod and spare not the rod. They will beat the child before they they correct the child. Mm -hmm. See, it's more than punishment. It's more than abuse. It's more than doing the uh, uh, whipping and uh, you got the authority. They know that. Mm -hmm. But after you have punished them, it's time to train them, correct them. Mm -hmm. This is what you did, and this is why I had to do it. Amen. Yes, Pastor John, that's one of the things that, that I was guilty of because that's how I was raised. Just if the child looks like they're getting ready to do something, pop them. You, mm -hmm. you just pop them before they even do it. Mm -hmm. And I can recall um, one church we were in and someone came to you and they say, hey, Brother John, tell Sister Pat, ease up on them little girls. They're nice little girls, you know. Um, and anyway, all I can do is give God praise because... At one point, he himself began to deal with me. It, you know, it was like God, God, God just had me look at my children Hallelujah. just to look at them. They were not bad children. They, they, they were good kids. <laughs> they were good kids. But had I continued on, on the path that I was going, I would have lost my children yes. as they grew up. We they they, they wouldn't have wanted to have too much more to do with me. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's a good point. Because so much hardness and discipline, mm -hmm. it, it it builds build bitterness in yeah. the kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're right. Amen. And they would rather stay in their room, door shut, mm -hmm. and unsociable with the family and have to deal with your attitude. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. If, you, if mm -hmm. you corrected them once, let it be over with. The child shouldn't have a constant discipline. Oh, I remember. And I, every time you see the child, he's going to get disciplined all over oh, again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's mm-hmm. not love. Mm-hmm. Hey, Amen. The Bible says, train them up. Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart. Mm-hmm. Hey, Amen. Do you know what it takes to train? That means going over that same principle over, over and, and over and over. over. Mm-hmm. In the household, as long as they are under your roof, they ought to be trainable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They ought to be teachable. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. And then when they fully understand what they have been trained, then they begin to execute it without you having to stand over the shoulder. Amen. Proverbs Mm -hmm. 19 and 18 says, Chasten thy son while there is hope. Lest not thy soul spare for his crying. In other words, while he's still young, teach him at his home. Mm-hmm. Before he get out in the streets, before the cops get yeah. him, before yeah. he gets in the jails and other of these things. Mm-hmm. Train him while there is hope. Amen. 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 And and when you uh, spank a child, it's not going to kill him. Mm-mm. Amen. The Bible says it will yes. deliver Read his him. soul from hell. It will yes. deliver his soul. Mm-hmm. Now listen. Have y'all, I know some of you out there have heard this. When your parent is get ready to spank you and they tell you, this is going to hurt me uh, more than it hurts you. And how many got an instant revelation and say, well, don't hurt me. Or they say, I love you. This is why I'm doing this. And I got a couple of revelations out of that. Mom, you ain't got to love me no more. <laughs> hey Amen. If this is going to be, because you ain't the one get ready to feel this pain. And I, right now, I'm okay. I'm cool, Ma. You ain't got to ever love me. <laughs> but you know, sometimes we have inside revelations that never make their way out. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm still standing because some, some of those revelations weren't to be expressed. <laughs> Pastor John, sometimes when, when we have babies, you know, oh, they're so cute. They're so cuddly. And when they start popping you in the face and you, know, you just laugh at it. Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. So, you know, you, you start letting other people handle your baby and they go and whop them in the face and, and all it. And so to, to this one person, it might be cute. The next person they do it to, they're going to pop your child's hand. Then you're going to get mad because somebody hit your child. Corrected them, yes. Yeah. See, so that's why when, when our babies start with all this, it's always so cute. And, you know, they just hitting all on you, smack you in the jaw and just push you in the back of your head and all that stuff. I mean, it, first it, of all, who is this aggressive But, but they do. It, uh, it, it graduates. Yeah. Yeah. It absolutely graduates. And those are the very kinds of children sometimes that grow up to be disrespectful to adults because mommy and daddy let me do it. So how wrong could, could it be? Mm-hmm. And and see they don't understand that no you can't go around hitting on people somebody gonna hit you back gonna knock your tail out you you, you just can't do it the, these are the kind of kids that sometimes end up going to school getting in fights uh-huh. yes yes when they really weren't trying to to uh, get in the fight in the first place they were really only playing yes so that's why we don't play fight yeah we don't play punch buggy praise oh, no. God. Amen. Yes. Did, did, you, did yeah. you have Proverbs uh-uh. 4? I have Deuteronomy. Amen. Uh, so no hitting. No hitting. Yeah. I can get to Proverbs. Proverbs Lord, 4 and verse? 1. Mm. It reads, Hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. Amen. Yes, good one. Deuteronomy eleven nineteen. It says, Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down and when you get up. Amen. Good. And the last thing I have on that, how many of you today, how many when you reminisce over the the discipline and the spankings and the correction you got, you thank God for those corrections now. Mm -hmm. It wasn't good at the time, but when you look over 
what what God has brought you through, brought you out of, and kept you from. Ooh, How many Lord. said, Lord, I thank God for yeah. the discipline that I learned at a young age. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. You don't understand, and most kids don't understand why you they they got to get the phone taken. They got mm. to take the keys to the car and different things. Mm. But when they they mature more mm -hmm. and, and they look, man, I I, I had a bad attitude. Mm -hmm. I talked back to my parents and I did this and what if the mm, parent mm. had let them continue that attitude mm. they wouldn't understand the value of life uh, what it is amen. now amen because I'm sure somebody wouldn't be here if they talked back to the amen. parents amen, <laughs> wow. amen. And we, have, we can have that same revelation when God chastises us of course it doesn't feel good at the time mm -hmm. but we look, later can look back and like oh lord I'm mm -hmm. glad he stopped me from doing that or going mm -hmm. there and I know my time is going by. I got to hit this last point. A good father encourages, comforts, and warns his children. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think about that, I'm thinking mm -hmm. about when the child is is in mm -hmm. uh, junior high or high school, middle school, high school, and they are facing real life situations. Mm -hmm. The number one person they should go to in their home is their father and their mother. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Not not friends, because friends are going to give you their opinion, mm -hmm. and their values may not be the same as what you were taught in the mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. But That's the right. best thing for a, a, a child, when he can come home and say, Dad, can I talk to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not the time to say, boy, get out of my face. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. It's not for the mother to say, I don't have time. What? When you shut them down, mm -hmm. you are devaluing. Th they're, they're, you're telling them your your issue don't matter to me. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. telling them I ain't got time to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Get over it. Mm -hmm. That's a famous saying for mm -hmm. people to get over. You be all right. No, they won't mm -hmm. be all right mm -hmm. because we found it. We find it more so now than mm -hmm. when we were growing up. This bully uh, attitude at school yeah. is messing with the minds of a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and so many young yeah. people have killed themselves, yeah. committed mm -hmm. suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, what if the, they had took, taken the time to really talk to somebody and let it release it? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that's what a good father is. He's, baby, come talk to dad. Even if he don't know the answer, he can give the child hope. Uh, I listen. Mm -hmm. I listen to I'll you. I'll answer. go find the yes. answer. Yes. I'll call somebody. I, I, this, just hold on. Trust that I'm gonna handle it. Yes. If he got to go up to the school, he got to go talk to something. Mm -hmm. But give that problem. Give your father that opportunity to, to be the man that God has made him to be. Yes. Not only that, but he develops the more he gets involved. Mm -hmm. He's learning. He, I didn't know, know anything about raising children, but as time progressed, I began to learn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but I began to watch both of my girls. I found out at a young age, they are totally different, night and day. So mm -hmm. what an expectation I had from one, I couldn't force that same expectation expectation on, on the, the other, other one That's right. and then That's when right. i let's take an example of school grades wow. <laughs> <laughs> <Listen, no. laughs> uh, school well. grades we put such a demand on our children oh you gonna get straight a's oh uh, and they get disciplined if they bring a c on my best day i brought home a c <laughs> Wow. Oh, I I don't know what was wrong with my mind, and I was like, and when when I thought I was still got a, a B, I didn't even worry about A's. <laughs> but when I was looking for a B, even an option. I was I still got a seventy something on my my paper, and I was like, I don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> but but here comes my my two girls, and I'm gonna demand them to get straight A's. Something's wrong. Yes. Something's wrong with that. And it's not right for the fathers to put that undue pressure mm -hmm. on their children. Amen. <laughs> if they're doing the best they can, yeah. so be it. Yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Because what if we set the bar so high and they yes. can't obtain it? Then we are putting down, I'll never, I'll never mm -hmm. mount up to dad's expectation. Mm -hmm. 
My God, that's the worst kind of uh, uh, insecurity you can give a child. Dad will never be happy with me. I will never uh, meet dad's expectation because he requires too much of me. But when he comforts, when he comforts his child and says, "Hun, I know you did the best you can, and I got your back. I'm in your corner. Yeah, you didn't get picked for the team. Yes, this didn't happen, but you still my child. Hallelujah. You got to comfort and encourage. And then not only that, he has to warn them. Amen. When they bring home some friends and uh, and uh, you can tell on some people, no, nah, this ain't the one. Amen. No, no, no. You need another girlfriend. You need another boyfriend. I, I'm not talking about the boyfriend thing, but I'm talking about friends to hang out with. Mm -hmm. No, uh, daughter. I, he coming around and yo and ha and talking <laughs> crazy, pants hanging. No, he's not the one. And so you got the warning. I see danger. I see danger on different aspects that they, they conversate with you about. That is the job of a father. He just don't say, go ahead and learn the best way you can. No, 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 no. The father has to be that, that, that voice, the, the representative of God in the home. Amen. Amen. Cause the worst thing is I said, Sunday is for your child to shut down on you as a parent. Too many parents have gotten so uh, far on the left or to the right that their own child has shut them out. Mm -hmm. yep. And and it's going to take an act of God, of God's grace and mercy for that yeah. child to trust you again. Mm -hmm. But see, um, Pastor John, that's because every time your child comes to you and you shut them down, the enemy's got his representative right there, mm -hmm. right there. To listen to that kid. Mm -hmm. To whisper in that kid's ear. See, mm -hmm. you don't really need your daddy anyway. I mm -hmm. can help you with that. Mm -hmm. Come on and follow me. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. even though the child is not may not recognize that that's the voice of, of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Or one of the enemy's imps. One of his demons. One of his angels. All that child knows is that. There, here's somebody who's listening to me. Yes. Here's somebody who's going to be my friend. Yes. Amen. 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 And so... You know, we just need the Holy Spirit. I said this Sunday. It is the working of the Holy Spirit to cultivate and to develop God's character in our lives as fathers. Amen. Amen. God didn't leave us alone. He gave us the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to work in us to develop and to cultivate the God kind of character to make mm -hmm. us the holy men of God that we ought to be. Mm -hmm. And I pray, I pray some of uh, those who are watching, you may say, uh, Pastor John, I don't have a real relationship with my father. Yeah. Pastor John, there have been so many hurts, so many disappointments uh, with my mother and my father. I, I just feel alone. The thing I just want to share, you, that may be happening in the natural, but as, as you grab hold the horns of the altar and trust God with mm -hmm. your life, God will be the father that you never had Amen. to you. He will be that father to love you, encourage you, to comfort you, and to warn you. He will be to you what your natural father couldn't be. Amen. 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 What God is asking you tonight to do, forgive your father in the natural, release it, and let it go. Amen. It's going to take work. It may take some tears, but God is saying, just release them. Uh -huh. we, we can't change the past, but we can uh, do something about our future. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I pray that the Holy Spirit begin to minister to you uh, what he can do and be in your life. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this lesson that you have taught us tonight, how the character of a good father. Yes. Father, we thank you for being a loving, caring, sharing, yes. heavenly yes. father in our own lives, oh God. Yes. God, you have proven yourself, God. You have shown yourself time and time again that you are trustworthy, you are loyal, you are faithful to your children. And God, we thank you because of your unfailing, unconditional, love. Mm -hmm. 
And Father, every time we mess up, God, you don't rub our faces in it. Oh, God, God, you says just ask for forgiveness. Come to you with a broken and a contrite spirit, and you will forgive us, oh, God. And Father, we pray tonight that you would create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Help us to be the Father, oh, God, that you have created us to be. And Father, we thank you this week, God, that we will have a blessed and prosperous week in you, oh God. Nothing missing, nothing Nothing lacking, lacking and nothing nothing broken. broken. All of our need is met, and God, and everything is going our way in the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen Amen. Amen. and amen. Be blessed.